Best Buy, a leader in consumer electronics. Today, Best Buy employs 125,000 people and operates more than 1,200 stores worldwide. In today's episode, we will discuss the founder of Best Buy, who was ranked 157th richest person in America, Richard M. Schulze. Today, Best Buy is a one-stop shop for all your electronic needs. Their average size store is about 40,000 square feet. But the beginnings of Best Buy are much more humble. Richard M. Schulze was born in 1941. Young Richard wanted to make a name for himself. One way to do that was by taking care of his own expenses. At 11, he approached his parents and asked them if he could deliver papers around the neighborhood. His father told him that as long as he was willing to share 20% revenue from his earnings toward household expenses, he could proceed. This was his first revenue-sharing deal. With the deal finalized, he started delivering papers. Maybe it was his early ambition of helping customers. His delivery style was different. Unlike traditional delivery where a new paper is dropped off at the doorstep, Richard would go the extra mile by sliding paper through the door so that the snow does not damage the paper. This gesture was appreciated by his customers and he managed to triple his income. By 15, he had saved enough to buy a car, but instead he decided to help out his parent. In high school, Richard's typical day was to wake up early, hitchhike to school four miles away. Time saved from hitchhiking was spent at a packaging company where he would sort out packages after school, working on an hourly basis. After work, he would return home to do his homework. This routine was repeated the next day. He then worked at the supermarket stocking produce. He soon realized the problem and approached his supervisor with the solution. The distribution strategy was time-consuming. When the orders were placed, they were all placed at once, so the distribution center would send trucks with all the products they needed. Then it was up to Richard to run between aisles and trucks in order to stock produce. That meant for Richard there was a lot of running back and forth and stocking took longer. Knowing the importance of time, he suggested store manager if the distributing center could deliver products in a manner where every aisle or two had its own truck. This would help Richard reduce his footprint around the store and he would stock a lot quicker. This was an effective system not just for Richard but also the supermarket. The quicker they stock, the quicker it goes out. But the manager did not think much of his idea. When Richard insisted, they told him, Young man, this is the way we have been doing it, and we do not intend to change it. After hearing this, he told them, Well, here are my paper. Have a good day. Richard then earned an honorary degree from the University of St. Thomas, and then he joined the U.S. Air Force at the Minnesota Air National Guard. After serving, he came home. Knowing that working for someone else would mean following orders, he decided to open a music store. And so, in 1966, Schulze and a partner opened their first store in St. Paul, Minnesota, The Sound of Music. Within months, he approached two of his competitors and offered to buy their stores as they were struggling. However, with absolutely no money and only expenses, he had to find a way to make the transaction. He told one of his competitors that if he was to join him, the other would follow through, and by having three stores under his name, he could pay them back in no time. The deal went through, and as it turned out, first-year sales reached $173,000. With similar strategy, he managed to open nine stores. In the coming days, Sound of Music was about to face one of its biggest challenges. The year is 1981. A tornado has slammed into the Minneapolis suburbs. The rumbling roars of the tornado lasted for 26 minutes. When the skies cleared, homes and businesses saw damaged walls, doors, in some cases no roof. Sadly, the tornado took one life and 83 were injured. The rain that followed started to pour in-store damaging products. Time was running out. Not only was the building getting torn apart, but the damaged products and insurance claims were climbing. Within a couple of hours, employees from all locations of Sound of Music showed up to help clean and save whatever they could. They were about to launch a sale that would change the future of the company. The Tornado Sale, where the plan was to reduce price of the damaged goods and sell them as is. The parking was full of buyers. In an area where tornadoes are rare, news channels made their way to televise the event. 
Before sales started, cops were handing out tickets to customers who were parking on side roads. Sound of Music had blocked off the traffic within the city. The company did their best to offer refunds for the tickets. People wanted to see the damage and were looking to get the best buy. Everything worth buying was gone by the end of the first day. The sale on that day compared to a regular day was up by a factor of 10. There seemed to be a love for no pressure style shopping, a place where customers were able to pick and handle the products. This sale left a mark on Schulze. It also brought out the first glimpse of a new business model and a few years later, a new name, Best Buy. For the coming years, Schulze studied other discount retailers such as Walmart, Toys R Us, Target, and Home Depot. He realized that because he was limited to only audio components that were popular in teens, he couldn't achieve the margins that he wanted. So his first step was to expand merchandise by offering appliances and VCRs. The revenue climbed to $9.3 million. Then in 1984, Schulze took another major step by introducing the Superstore format where they would expand the warehouse, where shoppers were able to walk freely. They offered more products at low price. This worked and the company went public in 1985. From 1989 to 1992, corporate sales rose annually by 23%, helping them open 151 locations. And then in 1998, Best Buy officially entered e-commerce by launching BestBuy.com. Their next move was to go international by expanding in Canada. In November 2001, the company spent $581 million to buy the largest electronics retailer in Canada, Future Shop LTD. And in 2002, Schulze turned over his CEO duties to Vice Chairman Brad Anderson, who also served as president since 1991. Schulze believes that success in retail begins and ends with the customer. He would have regular breakfast with cashiers because he knew that a customer would leave their final comment with cashiers. By strictly looking out for his customer, he managed to build a chain unlike any other. Until next time, have a good one.